Hi hey everyone, it's Rich McLean, alias Baron Dodger. Just kind of um, did a whistleblowing document to the DSS, since I've employed there, or so the federal court says. And um, yeah, they're probably gonna get back to me within two weeks. Um, the NDIS sure didn't want to hear my um, whistleblower statement. Um, they said I wasn't a public official, but of course the federal courts ruled that I was a employee of the DSS. So I wonder what the um, Department of Social Security are going to say about my public interest disclosure. Yeah, so this week I am, um, I mean, a lot of people haven't helped me and I, I kind of find it hard to get my head around that a lot of people um, would be happy if I was locked away and stuff. But anyway, for five years I committed Centrelink fraud, I guess, uh, under family violence, coercive financial control from former partner ASIO, Steve Isolides. And so I um, dogged myself in for the Centrelink fraud. So I'm really worried that um, they're going to um, jail me or fine me for the Centrelink fraud, which was five years of a pension, um, to the exclusion of all the factors. So I did it as a bit of a caveat to try and draw attention to the injustice that's happening for me. <sighs> yeah, it's a bit, of a bit of a long and wild story. And all these people are involved. And I've just um, decided that <coughs> if I was to die tomorrow or get knocked off or anything like that or hit by a bus, they'd probably just cut my body off and burn it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, it's been a wild ride. Um, uh, but um, I've decided to do my own, own eulogy on my website. So I'm, um, I'm doing that at the moment. Anyway, um, life's pretty chipper. I've got Crystal here. She's amazing. I'm pretty amazing. We're all pretty amazing. Um, I think I'm pretty courageous. I think I'm very courageous and brave. Um, I think it's much less courageous to stand by and let this continual persecution happen to me when you can intervene. Um, a lot of people could intervene. I was cuntish to my mother today. I yelled at her because she wasn't going to go to the police or get a lawyer. or It's just bigger than everyone combined, you know. And I just don't know what to do about it. I mean, the police won't help me. I'm a failed whistleblower and I can't get a lawyer. I'm owed probably $10 million and I'm lying here in poverty and I dress in the same clothes every day because I haven't got another set of clothes. And um, I beg for food, beg for money. It's a pretty um, distressing situation. Anyway... I'm just reflecting tonight about all the people that haven't helped me and who have opted in to um, intentionally, pointedly neglect me. And there's just so many people I really fear that I'm famous, you know. Like um, there's Deborah Glass, the ombudsman, who didn't get back to me. There's Tim Goss at AFCA, who um, delayed, deferred, denied my justice until they banned me. There's Mark Dreyfus, the Attorney General. He won't get back to me and doesn't acknowledge anything. There's um, uh, Kate Watson, the lawyer for the government with my work cover. She won't get back to me. Uh, I mean, she um, exploits me and she's acting outside of her remit um, with legal help. Uh, hello, I'm a person with a disability and the Charter of Human Rights says that we should have access to the law and equality before it. And I have neither of those things. And there's Member Pennell, he's at the AAT, delaying, deferring, denying my meeting, my um, work cover. Then there's the work cover from 2004, I think it was, it was never paid. Danny Pearson's delaying that one. And then there's, um, oh, there's just so many, um, I can't even begin to describe. And, and the front line of people, such as Linda Davis from Dandenong Mobile Support Team and my psychiatrist, I forget her name, um, and... Um, who else? Um, um, there's the people who care for me at Free Living Australia. There's um, Sue Ellen, my power of attorney, who hasn't really done anything or hasn't been able to. And um, then there's my poor parents who have to suffer me and um, get the cranky end of my attitude. Um, they all can't do anything. Like, everyone's hands are tied. I've been trying to reach out for people for so long and trying to get the help I need, but it's just none coming. There's the Mental Health Legal Centre who refused to um, acknowledge me, the Disability Discrimination Legal Centres, AAD. They all deny me. Um, 
there's, um, oh, let's just go through them. I mean, the fact that I killed myself and I was revived from death and there's a cover-up about that is really a bit shit for me. Um, there's a conspiracy about it and it, it's really hard to acknowledge for me that um, even if I died, um, no one would care or shed a tear. But um, that's life. And, but more than that, they'd go to the great lengths of covering it up. Um, I know I'm kind of infamous now. And, um, you know, I, I didn't want to be this person at the centre of the spotlight, but I guess I'm putting myself there, but I have to because the alternative is to die. And so the med the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the police, IVAC, the Victorian Inspectorate, APRA, NHPOPC, the Ombudsman, Ben Calder, they've all covered it up. Wherever Mercy Hospital, they don't care for me. I'm out of their remit now. Just hand it, handballed on to someone else. There's an absolute conspiracy there happening, covering up that fatal injury from which I now have an acquired brain injury. This is really shit. And I guess I look back and I think, oh, you know, I was so stupid to, to be so honest and courageous with um, detailing, you know, madness and everything in between sex, drugs and rock and roll, that people wouldn't take advantage of me. And I really think that um, <coughs> I was kind of one of those innocents with nothing to hide. And I didn't realise that people could be that mean. Anyway, um, that's life and I'm learning the hard way. But um, even other agencies such as um, the Herald Sun who vilified me, The Age who sacked me, Alan and Numbon who, yeah, published my book, but they kind of exploited me as well. I mean, I only made about 10 grand for that book and it defined a whole life. Same goes with ABC National. Same goes with all the speaking engagements that I did. I really had it in my heart to try and help people. And now that I needed the help, there's none around. But um, I, I look at it and I think, gee, it's almost like a, a biblical forsaking, you know? Like I lived a life of an innocent and then professed um, healing and um, understanding for about 30 years. And then I met powerful people who began to owe me money and I was stitched up and vilified. And um, it was the oppression and the financial abuse that killed me. It wasn't um, it wasn't a major illness, that's for sure. And then, um, yeah, I died because I was framed, rejected, isolated, and vilified. And I can't make it up, I died. And then um, I was revived by the hand of fate, or God, or whatever. And then I've been put back into this body I've come to accept as Baron Dodger, and that's what I'm trying to do, dodge the barren, <laughs> dodge the barren life that I've got. I'm not having much luck at the moment, but um, I'll keep going. There's no other, really, other way to go forward. If I just gave up struggling, no one would stick up for me, that's for sure. Like, I'm screaming for the world to help me, help me, help me, help me. But no one's coming and no one cares. But um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I just got to remember the simple things. Got my beautiful dog. Oh, Crystal, beautiful girl. And me, I've got no friends, got no family hardly. My sister, Jody Bongetti, she's not helping me. My brother, Brad McLean, he's not helping me. All my rest of my family have forsaken me. It really is like a biblical kind of story, a really a narrative of like a, a, a kind of a saintly creature, who, an innocent saintly creature who was touched by sin and then was crucified. And then um, got... Um, not reincarnated, got, um, got, um, you know, what's what they call it when you resurrected, only to be forsaken. I've got to look into this biblical kind of narrative and think, what's going on here? What's going on for me? Anyway, they say great love involves great risk. And, um, I'm here. I love you all. I uh, love people. Lo always love people. Love humanity. Love animals. Love the trees. And, um, in this dimension, um, just gonna have to keep enjoying those simple things when you've got nothing else. Anyway, it's Baron Dodger, just sharing some thoughts. And you can check out my website too, imustbecrazy.com.au. It goes into a pretty wild story, which is gonna go to the um, Federal Anti-Corruption Commission. But as the Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus won't get back to me anyway, and Anthony Albanese won't intervene in my situation, um, I don't like my chances at the Federal Anti-Corruption Commission. 
I reckon they'd rather stitch them up for Centrelink fraud and silence me so I can stop upsetting their apple cart. But if they do, it's really unfair because they're not taking it in contextual um, relations to all other aspects that are happening in my life and about this vile victimization and conspiracy to prevent the cause of justice, which has really murdered me. And then when I lived, they covered it up and now I'm still forsaken and no one will listen to me. <sighs> I can't believe it. Anyway, um, I really don't know what to do. Anyway, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to um, design my own eulogy at the, at the moment because I reckon if I died, I reckon if I died or got hit by a bus or I topped myself, they'd just, um, no one would come to my funeral, no way. So they'd just, they'd just cart my body off in a bag and burn me somewhere like they did to my mate Wes. That'd be the it. That'd be it for me. So, um, in case you get hit by a bus, I'm doing my own eulogy at the moment. So it's um, it um, I must be crazy. dot com. dot au. Anyway, I think I must be crazy. dot com. dot au. But then again, they said Jesus was um, a madman as well. <laughs> I'm having a Jesus moment. The God self. And um, anyway, just having conversations with myself. But yeah. Crystal and I say good night. There she is, beautiful girl, beautiful girl. She's tucked in. We're gonna go to bed. Hope you're all well. I do love you all and think of you all. And um, you know, I wish things were better. But you know, maybe it's just a case of enjoying the simple things and um, just celebrate the fact we're sentient and conscious. You know, and um, be kind, be kinder to one another because um. It's not very courageous to to allow someone to suffer this much, one single person, and then allow it to happen and stand by and not just ignore, but pointedly neglect someone, um, which is, seems to me to be universal in my situation. I don't know why. Um, perhaps it's got to do with my public profile or um, perhaps it's got to do with the fact that I'm an artist or my former partner in ASIO, agent, or could be a number of things, or the Dr. Whitaker case where I'm framed as an extortionist by a powerful lawyer. Could be any one of those things, but whatever it is, I'm just in this situation and um, there's not much I can do about it at the moment. But anyway, maybe I'll do a little video dialogue every night and explain my thoughts. But if you wanted to help me, there's ways you can help me on imustbecrazy.com.au. But for now, I've got no money, no rights, can't go to police, we failed a whistleblower, can't get a lawyer. Things are pretty good. Anyway, I'll just go beg for some food again, but that's how the Buddhist um, archetype got taken to Christianity, didn't it? Anyway, have a good night, sleep and run. Love yous. Bye.